Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and in today's video I'm going to talk to you about a short story that is called The Temple and it's by H.P. Lovecraft. So this is, uh, how do you call it, a compilation of the best short stories of uh, Lovecraft. This is volume 2. This is the only volume I have. I bought this recently because I tried to read the short story in English but I was having trouble with it so I decided to buy a Portuguese edition so I could understand better because the writing of H.P. Lovecraft is a bit more more difficult yeah and with terms that I don't know and even the phrase constructions are a bit more complex so uh, I saw myself not understanding almost anything that I was reading so I decided to buy a Portuguese edition so you can see here is in Portuguese but I think is understandable the temple and the short story has a parenthesis right at the beginning that it says that is a manuscript found in Yucatan I don't know where there is where, where that is so it begins saying that on August 20th of 1917 Carl Heinrich Heinrich Count of Altberg Ehrenstein, Lieutenant Commandant of the submarine U-29 at the service of German Imperial Armament, deposits a bottle and a register within it in the Atlantic Ocean, in a local that is unknown but probably and then says the latitude and the longitude where the ship or the submarine found itself um, broken in the um, deep of the ocean. So in here we have like uh, a testimony of uh, this man, Carl Enrich, that is in, is in his submarine where he was tenant commandant and he this is his testimony of what happened between 18th of June and 20th of August of 1917 so this is passing uh, through the first world war and here we have him describing that they were their mission was to torpedo um, a sh an English ship called Victory that would come from New York with destination to Liverpool and they achieved that they torpedoed that ship but when they approached the ship because then uh, the, um, the people that were on that ship goes go on boats to flee right but when the submarine approaches the, the wrecks they found there a man that is hugged through in a column a column and and he's like oh he's like a bit dark like italian or greek they describe they describe him as that and they found out that in his pocket he has a figure, a sculpture figure, and the figure of a young man has a crown of laurels. And then they thrown the man um, to the sea, but right before they do that, they he was with his eyes closed, but right before they thrown it to the sea, to the ocean. Uh, he 
he opens his eyes and so it begins um it begins a buzz in the crew they become uncomfortable and fidgety uh, and um, with uh, afraid like and one man muller said that right after they thrown it to the ocean he saw he saw him um, uh, swimming in the ocean like really fast so this uh, didn't help anything because the crew become even more afraid so after they uh, sunk Victoria the next mission was to sunk Dacia another ship and on June 20th Bohm and Schmidt become like crazy like lunatics and they didn't have a medic on board and they become delirious and so everyone was a bit on the edge and then in the following week the tension worsened by the disappearing of Muller and Zimmer and they they thought committed suicide but none of them saw them um, launching over the the submarine so they didn't know how they disappeared but they weren't there anymore and then a group of dolphins was around the submarine like they were swimming with the submarine and nobody knew why and besides besides mr carl erich that was a tenant that were another another tenant in the sh in the submarine that's called clans and clans was the one who keeps the ivory sculpture and then they after the days were passing they realized that perhaps the ship Dacia had like passed through them and they didn't notice it then occurred an explosion on the room machine or the machine the, ma the machinery room and nobody knew why because there weren't any uh, human errors or problems with the mechanic of the engines so nobody knew why the explosion happened but the two engineers died and because of the explosion they weren't able to navigate the submarine so they were adrift and they couldn't come up so the the system of coming up and down had been uh, destroyed in a way and they, they weren't able to navigate the submarine in any way shape or form and in this middle they found a uh, American ship and the crew was so afraid that they wanted to surrender but Carl was like how do you dare think that even think it because Carl um, along this short story he's very he exalts the um, the German strength and the German mind how they are strong and indestructible even and so he doesn't tolerate any shown of fear or weakness so this can be also um, a subtlety that Lovecraft gives us about what he thought about the Germans and well I don't know much about the first world war or the second world war and of course not every German is the same but you know this exaltation of the German capacity to um, confront every situation and be courageous and fearful and fearless, I'm sorry, and fearless. 
So he, through the short story, he does a lot of commentary that um, insinuates that and how he himself thinks, Carl, I mean, the tenant Carl, thinks himself as a good example of a German citizen and a German military, military man, and how everyone around him is inferior or not worth of the German specimen. Like, you know what I mean? So, well, coming back to the story, the crew becomes more and more rebellious and more and more fidgety and Tenant Clans has to shot a, a, a crewman and this is just the beginning of what is coming. And so the crew a mutinied and basically uh, Carl had to kill them all, basically except clans because they were sleeping and at five in the morning of 4 of July they mutinied a mutinied like that's the term right so um, they had to kill them all and so they w there were left these two men and they were adrift and Clans was, well, Carl thought that Clans was a good company, but he thought of Clans as an inferior, um, with an inferior intelligence in, compar in comparison to himself. So he thought of Clans as, um, well, he's there. You know, but it's not exciting or challenging at all. Like, you know. And they had brought uh, books to the submarine. So they passed the time reading. And they read about the fauna and flora. Because they were like looking out to where they were and what was surrounding them. And they saw... Um, they saw shells and other types of sea life. So they were trying to figure out where they were, more or less. And through the days, uh, clans become more and more unstable. And one day, clans started saying that someone was calling and they had to abandon the submarine, like getting to to the ocean and Carl was like what are you saying but Carl well what happened was clans went to the ocean and Carl before he does that asked him uh, to keep the um, ivory figurine but clans laughed as, at his face and Carl asked him if he wanted to warn the family and Clans laughed again. So he, he was mad. And then Carl stays alone in the submarine. And so he, he, had, he had spotlights uh, illuminating the terrain around the submarine and he realized that they were he was very deep in the ocean but there were still dolphins around the submarine and he wasn't understanding how they could be so that deep in the ocean so we kind of suspect that perhaps it was a different kind of dolphin and so he is like he is adrift and then he sees uh, like ruins in the horizon and he becomes to see like buildings ancient buildings in that 
deep of the ocean. And he, he's like, well, this is Atlantis. The lost Atlantis. And he becomes curious and he um, dresses a, um, a diving suit and he goes out and he sees coins, he sees Oh, he sees a, a sculpture in the buildings that is exactly the same as the sculpture, uh, the small sculpture that they found on that man on the vic victory ship. And it like he connects the dots and he comes in in the submarine and is like absorbed by what he saw because he's like in a building that he calls a temple because it looked like it looks like a temple and he wants to because he at the first time that he goes out he doesn't get into the building he just stays at the border and he like he takes a substance and he it is he, he is almost like hallucinating and he is doubting because he, he starts to hear a m music coming from outside but that is impossible because the submarine is soundproof he becomes hearing the music and is like maybe i'm not right on my head and he becomes doubting he begins doubting his sanity but he's so attracted by what he's seeing outside that he decides well he writes the testimony that we are reading right now that's the story the short story right so he, he begins to write what he's seeing what happened everything and he puts it in the in a bottle and he says that he's going to um, release the bottle in the ocean so the testimony can be found and the short story ends with him wanting to go outside again and get into the temple so the, the short story ends in an open ending we don't know what happens next it was an interesting short story as I was saying this is like um, also um, a description of what Lovecraft thought of uh, German of 19, 1910s, like through the First World War, and what he thought about the German people as a whole, in a way, because um, the way that Karl the Tenant talks about other people, the people that surround him, and in the comparisons that he does about himself or the German nation to other nations is like he a supremacy perspective you know this short story is kind of reflection of that so I heard that um, Lovecraft was a racist and he had a lot of evidence of his racism in his short stories or in his writings so I never read Lovecraft before. This is my first experience, reading experience of this author. But at the same time, I heard a lot of good things about this author because it was a reference to many authors like Stephen King. And um, I had curiosity about reading something by him. And you know, we have to think about in the epoch, in the era where, where Lovecraft lived and how they thought at the time. And so we have to distance ourselves a bit from, well, he lived long ago. And the way that they thought in that era is very different of nowadays. But, you know, we can't ignore what is there, right? But we have to separate one thing from another. In this short story, 
I think about the story in itself, it didn't have any subjects that were racist or anything. So it wasn't the case with this particular short story. And But this was about, well, what he was living at the time. Because I think this short story is from 1925. Yes, this is from 1925, so it's a bit after the First World, World War, but you know, it's the remin reminiscence of what happened. And so, this was really interesting. I enjoyed the way um, he, through the story, gives us um, that superiority mentality of the German military that I think well maybe or uh, some of those men thought that way I don't think that all of them were like that but maybe some of them were at that time the way that this short story ends in an open ending so open I think it was interesting because we never know what really happened after that, but supposedly he ended up dead anyway, in a way or another, but we never know what he saw in that building, in that submerged building. And the way that he puts the myth of Atlantis in this story is also very interesting. So. Um, I really enjoyed this short story. It was like um, like supernatural in some aspect, and it's very different from everything that I have read before in this month. So it was a different and interesting story, and I really advise you for you to read it because it's not because I'm telling you this the story that you shouldn't read the short story because you miss a lot without reading a lot of details here and the way that I'm that as I was explaining that he indirectly show us how Carl thought and how the prejudices of Carl so that point is very interesting and yeah, I, it was a good experience and I think I'm going to read more from Lovecraft. So maybe next year I bring another short story by him. So yeah, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Leave a like, it helps a lot the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Oh, don't forget to press the ring bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else. And I hope you have enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!